Hi everyone, this is Adam Thurgood of Hightower Las Vegas. We hope you had a great Labor Day weekend. Uh, we were a bit sheltered indoors here because of thick smoke coming from California. Uh, but nevertheless, we thought that we would spend today talking about the gold market as a result of a lot of incoming traffic about our opinion now that the gold price has increased quite a bit. Now, as you know, we've been bullish on gold for a couple of years now. And so far this year, gold is up about 25 to 30%. Now that's a strong run, and if we zoom out to a five-year view, we can see that the gold bull market really started in the fall of 2018 and has gone up quite a lot since then. So what's our opinion now? Well, if we zoom out even further and look at the last 50 years, what you'll see is that the gold market tends to go through bull and bear markets just like regular stock markets, but they tend to be much longer term. And we've seen several different bull markets in gold over the course of the last 50 years. And we think that we're just entering in a new one. We've just reached new all-time highs here in the last couple of months after a nine-year hiatus uh, from the highs that were set in 2011. And we think that the macroeconomic backdrop lends itself very well to gold prices increasing from here. And one of the reasons is the money supply. And if you look at this chart with the money supply layered in, you can see that the gold price tends to track the money supply to some degree, and the money supply has basically gone straight up since the coronavirus hit, uh, and we don't expect that to slow down anytime soon. So we do believe that there's quite a bit more upside in the price of gold over the next several years. So in a diversified portfolio, gold can add a lot of benefit. Now, when we look at what's happened in U.S. equity markets, they have gone up tremendously over the past five years or so. They have had a few corrections along the way, but the S&P 500, uh, which is denoted here in the, the gray shaded area, has done incredibly well when you price it in U.S. dollars. What's interesting, and a lot of people for, fail to uh, recognize this, is if you price gold or price the S&P 500 in gold, it looks quite a bit different. In fact, the S&P as of today is slightly down over the last five years relative to the price of gold. And what's also interesting to note is that gold and, and the S&P 500 tend to outperform or underperform each other for very long stretches of time. And you can see this blue shaded area here is the ratio of the S&P 500 to the price of gold. And when it's going up, that means the S&P 500 is outperforming. And when it's falling, gold is outperforming the S&P. Now, this orange line is the seven-year average of that ratio. And what becomes apparent very quickly is that once the shaded area crosses above the orange line, it tends to stay above it for quite some time and vice versa. And if you look to the very far right of the graph, you'll see that we've now just crossed below the orange line, meaning that gold is outperforming. And it could be a multi-year process where gold outperforms the S&P 500 uh, for the next half decade or more. Now that's based on historical analysis, uh, may not come to pass. But what's important to know is that it is not uncommon for gold to actually outperform stocks over a period of time. So why do we think that gold can continue to run for the next several years? Well, we believe that there are a lot of tailwinds in place that could push gold forward. One is the stimulus environment. We think that there is a lot of room for further monetary and fiscal stimulus. The government is doing all it, it really can to try and get us out of the coronavirus issue. And we don't see a short-term end in sight to them spending excessive amounts of money to try and pull us out. That tends to be good for gold because gold is a relatively scarce asset. And when you create something like dollars in a massive fashion, it's logical to conclude that something that has more scarcity will do well in that environment. Now, we also have a Fed that is explicitly saying they need to get inflation up. That's something new. Really, anyone that has been working in the industry for the last 50 years hasn't really seen that narrative too, uh, too explicitly, as we're seeing it now. And what does that mean? Well, it means that the Fed is now willing to let inflation run hotter than it would have otherwise which is another reason that gold should be a safe haven asset in this period of uncertainty. And the last thing is that 
When interest rates are the way that they've been, very low around the world and likely to stay low given the budget deficit situation in many countries, and you get higher inflation, you have something called a low real interest rate. And that is the rate of return that you'd earn on your bonds after uh, taking inflation out. Now, one thing about gold is that you have to store it, and there's a cost to do that. And the lower the comparative advantage of a bond is in inflation-adjusted terms, the better and more support gold tends to have. So we think that more stimulus, a Fed that's looking to get higher inflation, and lower real interest rates can propel gold forward for quite a while. So we think that the bold market is here to stay. There will be pullbacks along the way. This isn't something that goes up in a straight line. And you have to have prudent exposure to it. I wouldn't go out and get gold tattooed on your arm, uh, but it is important to have in a portfolio because we do think that we are moving into a new regime where inflation could be a bigger issue and gold has a 5,000 year history of protecting against inflation. So that's it for today. As always, give us a buzz if you have any questions and we'll talk to you soon.